For your next assignment, we're going to take the small picture that you created and we're going to practice using some parameters. So we're going to add some things to your picture. We're going to add some more functions and we're going to make our picture repeat with many loops. So you can even copy and paste your code into a new program if you want to keep your one picture separate from what we're going to be doing now. So this is going to be the small picture with loops program. You want to run your program, make sure everything works perfectly. Okay. Now we're going to put in some parameters because our picture is just in the upper left hand corner. We want to be able to move it around and we want to be really flexible. Maybe we want to have more than one smiley face. So we're going to add in some X and Y parameters. Now, like you're used to in math, our X and Y stands for our coordinates, its location. So I'm going to take a look at your code and everywhere that you have an ordered pair, okay, you have ordered, several ordered pairs just like I do. Everywhere you have an ordered pair, we're going to add in an X plus and a Y plus. So this 25 is an X location. Just in front of that 25, I'm going to do an X plus. And then this 25 is for my Y location, so I'm going to do a Y plus. And that's just for the first one. I'm going to go to every single line and for the first coordinate put an X plus and for the second coordinate put a Y plus. So I'm going to go ahead and work through this. You can spend some time working through your program so pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to keep on working while you're working. And if you have a polyline or polygon like I do, make sure you include every point. Now you're not going to change the widths or the colors, not at this time anyway. So just go through and you've added in all your X's and Y's. Now when I call my smiley face, I also have to include these um, parameters, these arguments. So if I have three parameters in my function definition, I have to have three arguments in my call. So I need to have an X and a Y. So they always have to match. So your function call has arguments and your function definition has parameters. They need to be in the same order and they need to be the same amount. Now in order for me to pass in an X and a Y, I also have to have a value for X and Y. So I'm just going to start X and Y as zero. Now when I run this program, it should work exactly the same. It should be in the same position. I shouldn't have any errors. There you go. But what this allows me to do is move my picture around. So just by changing the value of X and changing the value of Y, I've moved my smiley face. So that's pretty cool. So I can basically put it wherever I want. As long as I know my X and Y location, that's where it's going to go. This is going to give me some flexibility when I want to use a loop. So I'm just going to put this back to zero and zero for now. So I'm going to keep this one button and I'm going to add another button. So this is my small picture button. I'm going to add one. I'm going to make it um, repeat across and just do a whole series of smiley faces. So let's add a button and I'm going to call this one my picture and loops. And I need to define a event handler for this. I'm just going to call it click2 and I'm going to make it the same width. So I've got my mouse click event handlers right up here. So I'm going to just do another one for click2. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to um, do my set draw handler. But it's not going to do draw. I'm going to create another draw handler. So I'm just going to call it draw underscore loops. So I just set up my new button. Now I'm going to set up my new event handler for drawing. So this is my draw loops. I have to have canvas as a parameter. And I'm going to have an X. And I'm going to have a Y. And I'm going to call my smiley. And smiley has to have for arguments canvas X and Y. Now, if I just leave it like this, it's not going to do anything different. You can see it's exactly the same. But what I want to do is introduce a loop. So I want to do several across my canvas. 
So I'm actually going to start a for loop. Now I'm not going to use x in here like we do in a lot of our examples like for x and range because x is my variable for position. So I'm going to use a different variable. I could use n. I'm just going to use count. And then here's your question. How many smiley faces do you want? Well, let's just start with five. So I'm going to do five smiley faces. So I'm going to call my smiley. Now if I don't do any changes right here, I'm just going to get five faces in the same place. Let's just see what it looks like. So it is doing five smiley faces, but they're all in the same location because I never changed X. So right here inside my loop, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change X. So I'm just going to do some kind of an increment, but I need to do it by a fairly big number. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of overlap. So I'm going to do it by, let's say, 50. Let's see what happens. Okay, so pretty cool. I've got five smiley faces in a different place. So I didn't have to do a different function for each one. I didn't even have to do five function calls. Just by putting my call in a loop and making sure that I changed at least one of my location variables, I got five smiley faces. So this is a great advantage of using a function and using parameters is it gives me a lot of flexibility. So I can reuse this code and it doesn't have to be in the same position. Now maybe I want to do two or three rows. Okay. So this one is great and I might not change this right now. This is how many columns I wanted. I can put in a second loop so you can actually have nesting loops. So now I'm going to do rows. And maybe I want three rows. So for rows in range, I'm going to put three. Now I'm going to have to do some indenting. Okay, so I've changed my x in here. Uh, I need to start my x over at the beginning of each time. So it gets a little complicated here, but just kind of think about it. The beginning of each row, I want to start at the beginning. So every time I start a new row, x goes back to zero. Then I'm going to increment it. I'm going to start a new row, go back to zero. I'm going to increment it. So that's why I'm going to put x equals zero right there. I could actually take it off from here if I wanted. Then after I finish one row, I need to go lower for my next. I mean, after I finish one row, yeah, I need to go lower for my next one. So now I'm going to increment y. And I can do it by the same 50. I could try a different number. So I should get three rows of five smiley faces. Let's see. Okay, pretty cool. So once again, I've got 15 smiley faces. I did it all with one function, and I have parameters. And then all I have to do is manipulate those numbers here in my loops, and I get what I need. So go ahead and take some time to do this with your program. And if you want to, you can change the size of your frame, and you can have even more. So if I made my frame longer than 300, maybe I go to 600, and I can do 10. Let's just try this. So that's pretty cool. So take some time to go ahead and do that. Pause the video if you need to. Then we're going to come back and we're going to do another button. This time instead of having it be all organized in rows and columns, we are going to do random. Okay, so for random, let's add another button. I'm going to call this one random pictures. And I need another event handler for this, so I'm going to call it click three. Now, since I have another button with with an event handler click 3, I'm going to come up here to my mouse clicks and I'm going to add in this event handler click 3. And all it's going to do is call the draw handler. But it's not going to call the two I already have, so I'm going to create yet another one and I'm going to call this one draw ran, which is short for random. So I got that set up. Now I'm going to come into my handlers for drawing, and I need to create another one. So let's come over here. Here's going to be my def draw ran, and it's going to need the canvas as a parameter. 
All right, well, I'm going to need an X and a Y, and I'm going to need a for loop. But since I'm doing random numbers, I'm not going to need it to be all organized like this where I do an increment. I just want to get random numbers. So I'm going to start off with my loop. So for count in range, and how many random ones do I want? Let's just start with five. So now I'm going to get a random number for X. Now, hopefully you're saying stop right there. If I want to get a random number, I need to import that module. If you said that, you would be correct. So we're going to come up here. We're going to keep everything nice and organized. So although I could import the random number down there, we want to keep use good programming style. And I'm going to come up here to the top, and I'm going to import random. Now I'm good to go for random numbers. So I'm going to do x equals rand range. Now what numbers do I want? Let's take a look. I've got 600 here, so the y is going to be a 600. If I go that far, it could get cut off the edge. So I'm just going to go in a little bit on each side. So I'm going to go 25 and 575. So I'm just going to keep it within the range of 0 to 600, cutting off just a little bit so my smiley face is on the screen. I'm going to do something similar for y. So I'm going to pick a random number, and this time it only went to 200. So I'm going to go from 25 to 175. To give me some pretty good numbers. Now I'm going to call smiley. I still have canvas as my first argument, and I have x and I have y. So this should give me five random smiley faces on my screen. Let's see. Okay, so it is actually giving me five random pictures, but you might say, wait a minute, it's still going and going and going. Well, you have to realize that we are in um, a, a GUI now and so it's going to be checking constantly it actually checks 60 times per second how many you know what's happening so it's going to be refreshing 60 frames per second so it's doing five but it's doing it five constantly so this is kind of the effect that we have when we're using simple GUI and code sculptor is that it is event driven and it is just going to be keep refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. So it's not going to stop. But I can click here. Now it doesn't look like it's drawing it this time, but it's doing the same thing. It's drawing these pictures 60 times per second, but it's doing it in the same place. So you don't get the blinking effect. Same thing there. Okay. And whereas this one is picking random numbers all the time, so smiley face has gone crazy. Now this is your assignment to get those three buttons working. So you're going to have just the small picture, you're going to have picture and loops, and you're going to have random pictures. So you want to make sure that you get at least that far, and once you do, you are ready to turn this program in. But I do have one more challenge for those of you who might be up to it. So you might think to yourself, well just having a bunch of yellow faces is a little bit boring. Maybe I want to try some random colors as well as random numbers. So we want to be able to reuse our code. So I could, there's several ways to get random colors, but I have several um, different loops here. I have one for just the draw, one for the draw loops, one for the random loops. And I don't want to do different colors each time. I can do one function that's going to get a random color and I can use it as often as I want. So let's go ahead and create that function. So I'm just going to call it ran color. And it does not need any parameters. It's just going to do what it's going to do and it's going to return a random color. So first I'm going to get a random number. I'm just going to call it choice. It could be anything. And you have to decide how many random colors do you want. So I'm just going to stick with four. It's nice and easy, but you could use as many random numbers, the random colors as you want. So I'm going to do 1 to 5, but you give me 4 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now I'm going to use a, an if statement. So if choice equals equals 1, what color do I want it to be? So I'm going to keep create a variable called col, and just I have to make it a string literal. So if I want the first color to be yellow, that's what I'm going to put. Now I just do another elif, my choice equals equals 2, what's my next random color? 
So it's not like really random, but it's going to be between one of four choices. So I'm going to pick lime, a nice bright green. And then let's pick another color for three. How about white? And another color. And then I just need an else. And my last color will be, let's do orange. So I've got four colors there. And then the last thing to do is just return color. So here's one general helper function that's just going to return one of four different colors depending on a random number. If I want to do this, I'm going to come to my smiley and I'm actually going to add in a fourth parameter and I'm just going to call it call for color. Now I'm going to use it for just my smiley face. So instead of saying yellow, I'm going to use the string variable call. I want my eyes to still be blue and my mouth is still to be red. So I'm just going to change it right there. Now everywhere that I have called smiley, I need to use this argument. So I have smiley right here, right here. Okay, so I need call, call. Now I could actually put in a color if I wanted. But I'm just going to go random all the way. So I've got it right there, right there, and right there. Now I use this as a vari variable, so I actually have to give it a value. So as I was saying, what I could do is actually use a literal. So I could do this. if I want it to be yellow. Another choice I could have is I could set call to be yellow here and then just go back to my regular variable argument. Okay, So that will work. Or I can call this random color. This is a return function. It's going to be part of an assignment statement. So here's an assignment statement right here. Instead of giving it the literal yellow, I'm going to call my function. So it's going to pick a random number, assign it a string literal, and pass it into here. And then this is going to be set as my color. So that's pretty cool. I want to do the same thing here. So I can get the random color just before I call my smiley. Okay. And then it's set to go. And then the same thing here. So I've got a random x, random y. Might as well get a random color. And what I call them. So we're going to get some interesting effects going on here because remember we've got a refresh rate. It's going to be doing 60 frames per second. So hold on to your hats. Okay, it looks like I have a little spelling mistake. Let's see what I did. I didn't want to spell out the whole thing color. So I'll go ahead and fix that. All right. Now here we go. Oop. Do random. Little mistakes like this. All right. So, you can tell it's kind of getting late there, making some little silly mistakes. We've got it all fixed now. It's blinking, 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 but you can see very rapidly it's picking lots of random colors. The same thing's going to happen here. Whoa, we're going a little psychedelic. And here. It's a little easier to tell here where our random colors are. So that's just a great extra challenge for those of you who are up to it. And just remember, I've only added one parameter argument. I didn't need two. Okay, so just kind of be a little careful there. So you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. And if you get all the way through with this challenge, I think you'll be very pleased.